Paris Bay is known as a cobbled race, the hell of the north, but it wasn't until recent times when it became a trend by organizers to search out cobbled dirt roads, gravel roads. Back in the days, riders and races went over these roads simply because these were the only roads available. Now there are fewer and fewer of these sort of paths, and the ones that still exist, we cherish. Paris Roubaix, the French monument, features about 50 kilometers of cobbles each year, about 30, 28 to 30 sectors. We asked the professionals which sectors they think are the worst ones out there. What's your most feared cobbled sector in Paris Roubaix? Oh man, I'd nearly say the first one. The first one of the day. You're on 100k on flat roads and then you turn left and uh, and then you know you've got 60k worth of this to come and uh, you're still 160k from the finish. But once you get the first one over and done with, it's uh, you know it's, it's, it's all the same from there. <laughs> the forest, hard and bad. It's just you feel it as soon as you hit the stones that it's not healthy. Not for the body, not for the bike and you just hope to get through it without uh, puncturing or, or, or some other damages on the bike. Uh, so yeah, that's always the most the most feared one. The Arenberg sector is typically one of three five-star sectors in Paris Bay. It's 2,300 meters in length, and one thing to take note is that long, straight, fast run into this sector, slightly downhill at the beginning, and the other thing is that it's a completely straight sector through a forest, and that makes it unique. And like the Alpe d'Huez for the Tour de France or the Pojo for Milan San Remo, the Arnberg is iconic in cycling and forever linked to Paris Roubaix. Well, uh, yeah, Arnberg, uh, because it cannot, you cannot win the race, but you can lose the race there. If you have uh, too much uh, broken materials, you can really lose the race. The Trouille d'Arnberg, because it's always that, that first massive tension approach, that long stretch that you just like get in the line. You kind of feel you want to close your eyes when you, you, you get on the cobbles, but yeah. But I mean, I, I don't know if I would say fear, but yeah, this one is quite brutal. Actually, they are all quite hard. Let's say after the Arambe Forest, you just count back to, to get to the finish. Because everyone is just, you know, is going to the end of the race, so you get more tired and more bumpy, and uh, every sector come harder. Maybe if you ride them by itself every time, then you can have a better judge. <laughs> Unlike the Arnberg Forest, which is relatively early into the race, Mons en Pavel comes typically about 40 kilometers to go, and it's again one of those five star sectors typically of Paris Roubaix. And it's named after the nearby village Mons en Pavel. Introduced in 1978, this sector is a Z shaped sector, and in some years they only used half of it, cutting out midway. Now, in 2014, the Tour de France came here in the opposite direction. And that year, remember, Vincenzo Nibali had the yellow jersey. Lars Boom went on to win that rainy and muddy stage. Think back to 2008, when Stein de Volder helped teammate Tom Boonen with an attack and set up Tom for his second of four Paris-Roubaix victories. Carrefour de l'Arbe, this is typically one of the last challenging sectors in Paris-Roubaix. It's one of the three five-star sectors of Paris-Roubaix, coming only 15 kilometers from the finish in the velodrome, so it's where many differences are made in the race. Now, this is 2.1 kilometers, and it starts with a series of left-right-hand turns, and then two straights all the way to the finish. Fans will line out the entire sector Remember back to 2009, now that was a crazy year. We had Tom Boonen up in the move, we had the crash with Juan Antonio Fletcher, took out Leif Hoster with him, it held up Johan van Sommeren, Filippo Pozzato, Tor Hushoft rode on with Tom Boonen, but he too later crashed on this sector, in fact, right here in this very curb, leaving Tom Boonen to go on to a second Paris-Roubaix win. And the most contrasting thing about Paris Roubaix is after all those cobbles covered, all those sectors, the riders come in and finish on a velodrome, a concrete smooth velodrome, a lap and a half of this velodrome, and that's the finish to Paris Roubaix.
How strange is a velodrome finish in cycling, especially after racing over cobblestones? Pretty cool. I mean, it's the most iconic finish, I feel, one of the most iconic finishes in cycling. Um, when you roll on the velodrome, it's, uh, it goes way too quick. You're trying to soak it in because you remember as a kid growing up and watching it. Definitely, it's, uh, yeah, that's, it's all of those little bits that makes it special. Jumping and uh, <laughs> from the really high palace, I mean, it's so different. Uh, you start in the asphalt, cobbled, and then you arrive in the truck and it's like, uh, where, where am I? <laughs> Strange, but you can feel really proud when you arrive there. If you arrive there and you fight for victory, just uh, you just breathe, you don't have so much tactics actually. You've got to put all your energy there.